Hi, we're the Houstons. Join us for an adventure in boat building as we build our boat, the Janny J. Cool. I'm Martin Houston, and we must begin, as the old saying goes, at the beginning. You can see that Jan and I are well underway with boat building at this point in time. As I didn't have video capabilities in 2003, when I first began designing the boat, I need to go back and document exactly how I came about to design and build this particular boat. It didn't have a name then, as I didn't meet my future wife and life partner Janice Jeanette until 2004. This then is the story of designing and building the Janny J from the beginning. Well, I have here an outline of how I'm going to go about this, beginning with concept. Every boat begins as a concept or an idea of what kind of a boat you want to build. Uh, what will the boat be used for? And what do you want the boat to do? This is my list of concepts. This is what I wanted this boat for. There's expedition vehicle for exploring lakes, rivers, islands, and coastlines. Uh, it's obvious you want a vastly different boat if you're going to cross oceans and sail around the world than if you want to water ski. So every concept of a boat has to serve its own purpose. Uh, the J and J probably never will cross an ocean. Not that it won't, but it if it does, it'll probably be on its trailer in the cargo hold of a cruise ship while Jan and I sit in the hot tub. But mainly we want a boat that we can explore all the places that we like. Lakes, rivers, islands, and coastlines. Uh, number two here, I've got trailerable. It has to be trailerable so we can get it to all these places we want to explore. And uh, a boat that, my last two boats were big, heavy, ocean-going boats that weren't trailerable. And uh, you'll find yourself at the mercy of those that own the waterfront when you have a boat like that, which is not always a good place to be. So I decided my next boat, I'll be able to hook it up to my truck and take it wherever I want. And be able to launch it in the Black Hills, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, many lakes, and uh, we're not far from the Missouri River and I also love the Channel Islands off the coast of Southern California so we hope to maybe take it out there and go back out to the islands with it. Live aboard. Want to be able to live aboard the boat for extended periods of time so that we can do all this exploration either in the water or on its trailer. When it's on its trailer the idea is that it can be like a travel trailer can be a place to live when we're on the road, going from whatever waterway we want to go to. Want a shallow draft. One thing for easy launching with the trailer and to be able to get back in places, little coves and things where the really neat stuff is and the good exploring. My last boat weighed 25 tons and drew nearly seven feet of water. So there was, a, there was a lot of places I wanted to go, but I didn't dare take the boat because it was too big and drew too much water. And uh, you can get in trouble in some of those places. You can get into a place you can't get out of. And uh, I've done some diving out there and I've seen a lot of wreckage of boats that uh, got in places when they couldn't get out of and things went bad on them. So I want a shallow draft beachable. I want to run this thing, be able to run this thing right up on the beach and park it if I want, or park it on a sandbar. Uh, that's one of the reasons for I chose a flat bottom design. Right on a trailer nice, it sits upright on its bottom. There's a few trade-offs. Uh, you can't go quite as fast in rough water because they will pound. But uh, if you want to go fast in rough water, then you'd want a deep V, you'd want an entirely different boat. You'd want a deep V with probably a big V8 engine in it. And uh, this, 
Another reason why I'm choosing an outboard for power. There's some really nice four-stroke outboards out there now that are very reliable and very powerful. And an outboard, you can raise it up out of the water for landing on the beach. And uh, it's just be better all the way around for this boat. And also, about this size, you don't have an engine taking up a big percentage of your cabin. It also has to be strong and seaworthy. I've kind of overbuilt this boat. I've uh, worked in boat yards for 25 years, and I've built several boats and restored some old boats and seen boats that were built well and boats that weren't built too well. And I wanted a boat to be strong and, and seaworthy, be able to take the open sea and be all sealed up so that it won't, if a wave sweeps it, it won't fill up with water. Maneuverable. It's another really good point. I've explored the wreckage of boats that weren't too maneuverable and got some of them tight coves and couldn't get out. In a lot of those places, like I said, I wouldn't take my big boat because it wasn't maneuverable enough. I mean, you could get turned around in one of those coves and not be able to get out and you wind up on the rock. So a very maneuverable boat. I want a raised and enclosed pilot house. And uh, the two cabins, four, four and aft, and the pilot house separating the cabins. So the raised pilot house is the vantage point to be able to see over all your cabins. And the two separate cabins gives you a bit of privacy separated by the pilot house. I didn't want the pilot house to be in one of the cabins. I wanted a separate pilot house raised for visibility and enclosed. My last boat had no pilot house. You were out on deck in uh, all the elements. And there was a lot of times where I sure would have liked an enclosed pilot house, but then I want to be out in the open too, so I want the big sliding doors and an opening window in the front to be able to open the boat up to get air going through it, but still be able to close it up to shut out the weather if you want to keep going in bad weather. That's the reason for that pilot house. And then the two cabins fore and aft, a uh, forecastle going down from the pilot house forward with the two bunks or the floor will be able to come up and make one big bunk and then the aft cabin which we ended up planning on one side to have a head and shower in the back and then a galley area and the other side a dinette that will fold into a bunk and maybe an upper bunk so we can take guests aboard people who want to cruise with us on our open back deck like a nice big back deck for working out in the open Diving operations, uh, it's just nice having a big open back deck, but also sealed above the water line, a draining deck, what they call a wash deck, so it won't fill up with water. Any water gets in it, it'll drain over. So the boat will be totally sealed. Like they say, you should be able to go end over end, roll her twice, fire it up, pump her out, and head home. Hopefully that will never happen, but it has happened to boats. So you just got to be ready for it. You want it to be easy to build. I don't want to spend 10 years building a boat. Uh, it, it sets up on its own bulkhead. There's no special form for building it. The boat is its own form. And lumberyard wood. Like an old boat builder once told me, you can't build a boat out of wood you can't get. And it would be nice to have all this fancy wood. I'm using some oak beams and some mahogany, but mainly the wood for this boat, I'm go down to the lumber yard and buy it. Plywood, 2x4s, 1x6s, 2x6s, 2x8s. And sometimes you can find some really good wood. Sometimes you have to cut between the knots or just slice off on one side. You buy oversized pieces and cut them to the piece you need. It's really hard to get good clear stock anymore. But uh, sometimes you do a little hunt around. I found some really good wood in Montana. And you just have to Make friends with the folks at the lumber yard so they'll let you pick through the stack and you can find some decent wood. But that was a, important to be able to make out of wood that I can just go down and get. No special wood. And those were my concepts for this boat.